Okay, I'm going to show you here how to bisect an angle. Now, bi means two, and sect means cut. So we're going to cut it into two equal parts using only a compass, which I have here, and a ruler or a straight edge. I go to point A, the vertex of my angle, and what I'm going to do here is put my compass at any, any length I want and draw an arc. Okay, so that arc now meets this line at B. And meets this line at C. Now I can go to points B and C and I can change my my angle. I don't have to have it the same. I can move it out in and out. Um, I'll go to, to C and I'm going to draw an arc here and I'm going to go to B and draw an arc here that intersects the other. Where they meet it, I'll call point D. Now, if I take a ruler and join up A to D, didn't quite go through there, I then have my triangle as the, ang sorry, my angle is bisected here. So, the original angle, when I put my, my protractor on it, comes in at uh, about 36 degrees and then these angles here are each 18 and 18. So this angle here is 18 degrees and this angle here is 18 degrees. So I have divided the angle evenly into two equal parts. Now here is why this works. On my original diagram I have what's called a kite. I have made A to C, this is my original arc here, that I drew my original arc, A to C and A to B are equal. Then I put my compass point here and drew an arc, and a compass point here and drew an arc, and that made this equal to that. Then when I join up A to D, I am taking a diagonal of my kite. Now this line belongs to both triangles. We have now this side equal to that side, this side equal to that side, and this side equal to itself. That's called a side, side, side proof that the two triangles are equal. And if the two triangles are equal, then corresponding angles are equal. And this angle right here then is going to be equal to this angle right here. Okay? We also get this angle here equal to this angle here. Uh, but this was our original angle, so that's why it ends up dividing it evenly into two. Okay? Now I'm going to show you how to bisect a line segment. And because we want it to bisect at exactly 90 degrees, we call it a perpendicular bisector of the line segment. And it's a, a very easy construction. You go to one of the points A and make your compass so that it goes more than halfway and draw an arc. Then, without changing your compass, you go to B and draw another arc so that it intersects this in two spots. Now all you have to do is take your original line and join these two points here and here. We'll call that point C and point D. What you have now is an exact 90 degree angle here. 
and a 90 degree angle means that it's perpendicular. And if you measured each side, you'd find that this point, which I'll call M for midpoint, M to B is equal to M to A. So it has bisected it or divided it evenly into two as well. Okay, so you get a 90 degree angle here and your sides bisect it. Now the reason why that works, we can go back to our other diagram. Uh, let's make a new one here. If you have this side and this side and this side and this side all equal, which is what I've done by forming those arcs there, we call that a rhombus. When I put this side in here, again, as we showed from the last thing, I get this angle equal to that angle. Okay. Now I'm going to put in the other diagonal. Now just looking at these two triangles, I have this side equal to this side, this side equal to this side, and I have this side equal to itself. Side angle side is also a way that triangles can be shown to be equal. So these two triangles are equal. Therefore, this angle must equal this angle. So that must be 90 and that must be 90. Okay. Also, this side will equal this side. Now, using these two triangles, I could show the same thing, that this side equals this side. So we end up with a perpendicular bisector. Okay, and this sort of a shape where you have all four sides equal is called a rhombus. Now to finish off this, here is a really neat little construction. On this triangle here, I have done the angle bisectors, uh, sorry, the perpendicular bisectors, uh, of each side. And I've just left the arcs in. Now I'm going to join up the arcs. So I'll join this arc to that arc. And I'll join this arc to this arc. And I'll join this arc to this arc. They all meet at this point right here. And that's called the circumcenter of your triangle. If you put your compass point there and start to draw a circle that goes right through through C, it's going to come around and it's going to go right through B and right through point A as well. So you have done what we have called circumscribed a, uh, a triangle, drawn a circle completely around a triangle. Here, I have taken a, a triangle again, and I have done the angle bisectors from each side. Now, if I join them up, this angle bisector is there. This angle bisector is there, and this angle bisector is sort of my test. It should go through the other ones. Yes, it does. It goes right through that point there. And that point there is called the in-center of my circle. So if I put a compass right there and start to draw a circle that just touches this side here, then it's going to come around. Whoops. It's going to come around here and just touch the inside here and come around down here and just touch the inside there. And there you have a circle inside a triangle. That's called the in circle. Okay, I didn't put it in very dark, but you get the in circle right there. That's a bit darker. Okay, so the angle bisectors where they meet in a triangle give you the in circle. 
The perpendicular bisectors, where they meet in a triangle, give you the circumcircle. And those are really neat things for, your, uh, for you to try to see how accurate you are at doing these constructions.